Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I said it before and I say it again, there should be an open source variant of everything, even of a simple wireless keyboard. So let's make one. In this episode, we are building a keyboard completely from scratch. No pre-made parts, our own PCB, our own custom firmware, even our own custom keyboard layout. Because if we make it all custom, then we basically can make all other things that are not as custom. So let's get started. If you think about making your own keyboard, you won't bother with stuff like this. You would want mechanical switches, not membrane switches, because you have to be a keyboard enthusiast or a weirdo like me that rather spends a lot of money and time to build his own contraptions than go in a shop and buy one. There are a ton of different mechanical keyboard switches around and they all feel and sound differently. You may be able to hear the clickiness. I personally prefer the very clicky ones. And so of course I want my keyboard to have those. Um, there are a lot of different types of switches by different brands, different manufacturers, different sizes. And I want my keyboard to be very weird. I want it to be Bluetooth connected, probably a Bluetooth low energy. I want it to be a low profile one. So these are the normal ones. And this is a low profile key like on a laptop, very flat, so it's super compact. I don't want the full 100 and something key layout. I want a compact layout. I think about 60 keys, and it has to be a weird mashup of the English QWERTY layout and the German QWERTS layout, because I basically need both in my daily driving. Also, for a BLE keyboard, it has to have uh, the LiPo and charging on board. And on top, I want it to be modular so I can exchange parts whenever I get new weird ideas. And also we're doing everything from scratch. That's gonna be a big project. This project will actually be my second keyboard that I built. I've made one before in this previous project that you may have seen. This tiny computer has a full QWERTY keyboard. This is a Charlieplex keyboard and you can see little LEDs flashing here that is actually it scanning the keyboard array. This time I don't want to use Charlieplexing, but multiplexing. It's more suitable and classic for such a keyboard when you have enough I.O. to uh, use. I would like to see if I can translate that concept with the LEDs over to that keyboard because I like the look of this and also LEDs are still cheaper than uh, proper signal diodes. So let's just try it out. Now that I see a normal keyboard and I want to make like a 60 button compact one, this is still going to be a huge PCB. So let's better get started in KiCad. Welcome to my computer and KiCad. This is the complete schematic for all the stuff that is going on directly on the keyboard. When we look here, this is our main microcontroller an ESP32-S3 this time, because that one has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and I want Bluetooth this time. Also, I need a lot of IO, this thing has it. So we have four LEDs, these are for the state. Then we have a lot of resistors here, all going to the keyboard itself. And over here, we got a Molex PrimoFlex connector which is meant to interface different boards. And because I don't know how they will exactly line up and how far they are spaced apart in the vertical direction, I use these Primo flexes because then it doesn't matter. I just use a cable in like appropriate size and then I can vary that. So that's pretty handy. Let's look at the keyboard matrix itself. This has 60 buttons. They are in a 12 by 5 grid. So this is a normal multiplexed uh, one. These here are LEDs instead of the usual diodes. Uh, in the schematic it doesn't matter, you just match a different part uh, than in the layout and you could use whatever diodes on here. So I just use LEDs because I think maybe this uh, LEDs as a diode concept also works with the big keyboard. We'll see. Here we have the second board. 
This might be familiar to you. I've used this circuit in a few projects before, which is a very simple charger and protection circuit for LiPo cells, only for single cells. And of course it has another of these Primo Flex connectors. And here's the tricky thing. You have to really think about how the boards are orientated towards each other. You can get these connectors with pins on the bottom or on the top, and you can also get the little cables with pins on the same side or on opposite sides. So depending on how that board is, you have to choose the right parts and uh, then they connect correctly to each other. If you mess that up, you're in trouble. Let's look at that as a board. You can see it's really wide and it lines up, like this empty space here lines up with the LEDs on the board below it and all the stuff is on the other side of the board. There are not even traces on this side. And this is the main board with all the switches and with all the other electronics on here. So the secondary board will cover this upper portion. And here concentrated in that corner is all the business stuff. Hi. I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore the world of electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Here we take electrical engineering topics out of the boring old textbook and bring them into life through demonstration and test. Sometimes we even build stuff, and if there's a way to test the concept at hand, we'll put it on a scope and measure it, and in doing so, hopefully bring it to daylight. So if that sounds like a good time to you, come hang out with me every couple weeks here at Element 14 Presents. All right, see you there. The boards have arrived. Thanks to Eisler for manufacturing them for me. This holds all the keyboard switches. I deliberately made them so they would accept more than one switch and also they accept hot swap sockets. So in case you would like to rebuild this, uh, you don't have to use the exact switches like I did. I can't give you a list of compatible switches because I don't know, but you might also make your own switches fit. Just check the files and see if they line up. Oh, and also I got a second board because this one doesn't only have the keyboard switches, the microcontroller, USB and a PrimoFlex connector on it. It also has the interconnect to the second board, which holds all the LiPo charging and that goes over here. So we have to have a flexible interconnect between these and that is what I use those Molex connectors for that you've seen on the schematic. Of course, just a bunch of switches on a board isn't a keyboard, we need keycaps. Of course, I could use standard keycaps, but they wouldn't actually fit the layout that I intended. Then I could use blank keycaps, but then I wouldn't like see what they're doing and I'm not good at memorizing all the functions of a keyboard. So I actually look down at it more often than not. So I 3D print my own keycaps and I have to design them, of course in FreeCAD. Welcome to FreeCAD. This time we're not making a case, we're making keycaps. I basically make really weird keycaps. They should fit A, switches that are not that standard. B, they are low profile as you can see here. 
and see they have like a completely custom layout and these letters and symbols are actually on the inside so if i turn that around you can see those are raised on the inside and then i can mark them with a sharpie and they will be visible through the outside so no matter how much i touch these this surface here they will never wear off never oh and before i forget i also designed a shell for the keyboard. This was supposed to be milled in aluminium, but I couldn't get it made back, uh, in time. I 3D printed a proxy and it it's okay, but it doesn't look that great. So basically I just stuck some feet under the keyboard and use it as it is. And it, it already works great, but if you want a case, there it is. And also the files are on the community. So knock yourselves out with it. The curious among you may have noticed that all these keys are in lines, they are orpholinear, as opposed to staggered, like on a standard keyboard. The staggering of keys is residual. It's like in the old days with typewriters, you had to have them staggered because of mechanical reasons, now you don't. And that is why orpholinear keyboards are now a thing. I tried one out about a year ago or so, and I wanted to have one, I couldn't find one to buy it. Now. I have one because I made it myself and you can too. So if I switch this on, it doesn't do anything because there's no code on it. How could it do anything? We need to go to the Arduino IDE and look at the code. Oh, it's finally time to talk about the code. Well, we're in Arduino, of course, and I told you I'm gonna write the firmware completely from scratch. I'm actually not doing all the things from scratch because I'm using a library to read the keypads, but that's it. And also there's a BLE library, so you can still say, yeah, it's done from scratch, but yeah, libraries. So we include the BLE keyboard library. This did not work with an ESP32 S3 from the get-go. I had to modify it a little bit. Okay, we need the Adafruit keypad library uh, just because it's easier to do that than from scratch. We have five rows, 12 columns. These are my pins for the rows. These are my pins for the columns. Here are some really handy modifier key codes. Then we have the keyboard layout. This is basically layer one. And I ha don't have that once. I have it four times. These are basically the keyboard layers. And we have to make instances for all four of these. So here are the LEDs. Then we uh, start all our keyboards or our keypads. So it's like we have four in one and also a BLE connector keyboard. We have to first make sure we know in which layer we are. And when we know that, we change to that layer. So the code is a bit backwards here because it works faster that way. I, I switch stuff around to speed up the whole thing. So that's how it is. If you want to change your keyboard layout, you just go up here and put in whatever you want. And that's it. That's how you change keyboard layout, flash that on the controller. Hooray! Yeah, let's get this thing going. So during my experimentation, I encountered a problem. My concept with using LEDs instead of diodes doesn't work as intended. You know why? Voltage drop. It did work on my tiny little handheld that I got here because this is a five volt system. The voltage drop across these diodes is not too much, so it could still register any key presses. But this is a 3.3 volt system. And that means the voltage drop is too big. So I have to replace all the resistors with zero ohm resistors. And I'm also uh, replacing all the LEDs with proper signal diodes. So it's gonna be expensive again. Well. That's what you get, development. Finally, it is done. We have working code, we have a botched board. Now we can turn this on and then we get a little light show and that indicates a proper boot process. And now we should be able to find that with our PC and with the phone. So let's try out if typing already works. I personally like to have some indication if there is like shift or alt or something else pressed. So I made uh, this to have a visual indication of whenever I press one of these modifier keys. So I know on which layer of the keyboard is at the moment active. 
So I can basically see that in my peripheral region and also I like the light show quite a lot. We did it folks, we made our completely open source Bluetooth keyboard from scratch. Nothing pre-made on here, 3D printed keycaps with a custom layout of a linear, low profile, included LiPo battery and my personal favorite, the lighting up for switching layers, which I personally really, really dig. If you want to make your own, all the files for this are on the Element 14 community. There are also extended code and CAD segments. So if you're really interested in the details, go watch those videos and I'll be happy to answer all your questions in the comments. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. <laughs>